I know that there's a question around Andrew McIntosh and I can weave that into this conversation if you want, or you can yeah, ask yeah, separately. Yeah, go ahead. Go ahead. But there was a situation in um, 2023, um, where late 2022, where Andrew McIntosh um, blew the whistle, if you will, and he was a professor at ANU and he had actually developed the method that he blew the whistle on when he was at the regulator. Um, and I think that's a really interesting point that um, there was obviously merit in what was being done, but perhaps, you know, we have a lot of methods that don't work all over the country. And this is one of those methods that they allowed to work all over the country. Now, a lot of regrowth and carbon storage comes from rainfall. If you don't have rain and water, the stuff does not grow. If it does not grow, it probably does not capture carbon in the in the biomass or in the trunks. And there was a view that a lot of these projects were being uh, propagated on, on land, which looked more, more like the moon than somewhere that would capture carbon. Now, having said that, if you model some of the, the better projects, they're also probably taking more carbon out than they're being credited for. So it was done on a full CAM model, which is a full carbon accounting model. So again, it's on aggregate. Um, and I think the whistleblowing was one of those occasions where it probably needed to come to bear for us to just take a step back and say, actually, is this the right thing to do going forward? Um, people had made economic decisions based on what they were allowed to do. So you can't just you can't just pull people away from that. Um, what we've ended up with is a situation where a lot of the methods have been grandfathered, avoided deforestation in Australia. Um, HIR was also uh, sunsetted is the word. Um, soon to be the um, environmental plantings method will be sunsetted. They have a certain period that they're allowed to exist before they need to go and undergo a revalidation period. Um, and the market has really struggled for the last couple of years to find the replacements for these methods. You know, what is something that everyone can stand behind and go, yay, we've, we've captured a ton of carbon. Andrew did a great job of bringing, highlighting the bad. There's still some work to highlight the good. And I think what we'll end up with in the next 12 to 18 months is a scheme that, frankly, the ERAC, which is the um, committee which now approves methods going forward, is far more cautious than they were in the past, right? So there's, there is a expectation that this many credits is coming to market, where in reality, we're probably gonna see that come to market for the next couple of years. So I think the, for those projects which are solid, they will be rewarded um, very well over the next couple of years as the price of carbon becomes perhaps more aligned to the true cost of abatement.